All right, gang, skydiving season is here and Parachute Mobile needs to evolve. So how about we build a 20 meter J-pole, also known as a ZEP. So as far as I know, anyhow, maybe I'm wrong. Uh, come along, let's build this thing. I'm gonna test it on the ground and maybe in a couple of weeks, I'll get a chance to test it in the air. I'm pretty sure that I'm going to speed this up, but just in case I don't, I have a spool of cable that I bought from, um, I don't remember, what, what, one of the three or four that usual sus suspects that sell ham radio gear. Um, I have a 25 foot uh, tape measure. I need 50 feet and five inches. I'm gonna cut 50 feet and six inches so I'd have a little bit of room to work. So I'm gonna go down and back and six inches. I'm using a paint stick to mark where on the wire, on the tween lead, is 25 feet. It's uh, my point of reference. I'm bringing it back to over here to pin it down at the beginning again and roll it out one more time. I don't want to fold the cable, cable over if I don't have to. Okay, so with the magic of Google, I converted the overall length in, uh, of the antenna in centimeters to feet and inches. It ends up being 50 foot, four inches, and 0.92 of an inch. So since I have to uh, solder th the endpoints together, I'm gonna go ahead and cut it with seven inches to spare. That way I have uh, a little bit of wiggle room on either side of uh, the antenna to make this cut, you know, actually work. And you can see there where I marked the 50 foot mark with, again, with the red marker uh, or red paint uh, so that I have a good idea of where it's at. Uh, you don't have to use res red paint, but you know, or a marker or anything like that, but I find it handy to mark it in something that obviously contrasts very well with whatever it is I'm marking. So we are at uh, 57, so 50 foot, seven inches is there, zero inches is there. So we're gonna cut it right at the beginning of that window and we're gonna trim and solder. I have uh, my soldering iron getting warmed up right there. You can't see it, it's in the frame, but it's getting warmed up. We're getting ready to get this done. We're just marking off a half inch or so. Oh, yep, on either side. Good enough for now, right? Oh, you know what? I better go get some heat shrink. That would help be helpful. So I probably don't need this uh, heat shrink, but I'm gonna put it in play just in case. And let's see, we're gonna measure about that and cut it. Put that back in the box and I'll have this ready to heat shrink over after I make uh, the connection ready. Let's see. That'll, yeah, that'll be nice there. Good enough. So now that I have that out of the way, let's, um, let's see. Here we go. Some nice silver solder and makes for a little bit easier to see than the side I burnt up already. I, uh, 
can probably do this without the block, but it's immensely easier to just put some heat on those cables, that wire, um, when it's pinned. So let's touch off the solder to the iron here just to get some of the flux going. Come on. There we go. Come on. So I got, I touched off the solder to the ironing, uh, to the soldering iron just to get the uh, flux going here. And uh, once the flux gets going onto the, oh, great. Be amazed at my cold soldering technique. It's fantastic. Okay. Of course. Why don't you just hold it there while it cools, Carlos? And I fear that my heat shrink has shrunk with just the uh, the heat that the soldering iron put on the wire. Okay, so the other end we're going to do the same exact thing. We're just going to strip the cover off and bend it. And I think what I'm going to do on this side is just use some uh, electrical tape to wrap it because I don't want to deal with cutting into this window. So I'm just going to fold this over, this time to make things a little bit easier for me, I'm going to use the Jaws of Life, also known as a pair of vice grips to hold all of that, to hold those two together close to each other while I solder it. Let's see, are we there yet? Again, be amazed at my incredulous, unbelievable cold soldering capacity here. And since we have soldered both ends together, we should have continuity of both ends. I don't know if you can hear that in the, on the video, but I have a continuity tester with a sound. And then we should obviously be able to go from here to here and from here to here, and then from here to either side of this. So both sides of the uh, twin line are showing that there's conductivity throughout the entirety of it. Uh, next, we're gonna measure and cut the gaps that we need and then measure and cut for the uh, feed point, and then we'll go from there. Okay, so the calculations on the M0UKD website say that I need to go 50 and a half centimeters from the end of the antenna to the feed point. Uh, so we're going to measure 50 and then mark it and then come back and strip it. So. It happens that this ruler I have here is both in revolutionary units and in uh, worldwide used units. So we're going to go from there to there. Uh, let's see, can we get that all in one shot? No. Trust me in this. <laughs> so from the edge of the antenna there to Here is 40 centimeters, right there, and then we're going to add another 10 centimeters, 10 and a half centimeters for the feed point. So let's see, from there, let's get you a little closer. Ten and a half centimeters is the feed point. So I'm gonna just mark it there and mark it there and write feed on it. 
That way I, I can come back to this and make it work there. The next measurement is at 500 centimeters, 505 centimeters for the gap on the matching section. So uh, I got to figure out what that is in inches so that I can uh, use a tape measure and use that to measure it here. I'll come back in a minute. Okay. The googly goo says that 198 inches and 7 16 is what I need to cut from whatever centimeters I said before. So 198 point and 7 16 is right there. So that's where all the gap will begin. And I've marked it as such. And I'm going to find my, the other end of the gap and mark it again. So I decided to come back to the bench for the gap itself measured. Uh, the gap needs to be, uh, let's see, 21.1 centimeters. So since I have one of those uh, metric unit uh, rulers on one side, I'm going to use it here on the bench. It's a whole lot easier than on the floor. And 21.1 is 21 centimeters and one millimeter. So we're going to go to right about there. All right. Yep, right about there. So the gap is from there to there. And in true Carlos fashion, I'm going to make sure to measure once and cut three times because that's just the way I do things. It never seems to work out when I measure it three four, or four times. So uh, I'll double check all my work and then come back before I start making cuts. So I've double checked everything and here goes nothing. I mean, worst case scenario, I do have another length of this that's about the right length to make this work. Wish me luck. And gone. All right, so, so you can see I've made the cut on the feed cable and I'm also going to get rid of this cut or get rid of this cable, this wire, I should say, along the length of, uh, or a piece of it anyhow, so to make sure that there's no connection at all. I'm hoping that the proximity of this wire doesn't create any reactants or uh, anything of the like. That was on the window, so it's really easy to trim out. Um, but that should be enough of a gap that it shouldn't be an issue, I hope. And if it is, guess what? I'll learn when I'm in the sky. Uh, let me uh, get my SO239 for this uh, so I can get it ready with a soldering iron and we'll come back. So let's not forget the rule is cut towards your chum, not towards your thumb. So I'm gonna take it nice and easy here, cutting away from me. All right, onward. Okay, so I reserve the right to change my mind and I have. Uh, putting on this connector on there, I couldn't figure out a, a good way of doing it without having the shield eventually end up touching that. And I don't wanna have to deal with that short, uh, especially not if I'm transmitting. So um, yeah. We're going to deal, throw that to the side for now. And what I have is uh, a lead that I prepared to make a Yagi a while back and I ended up using something else. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to just go ahead and use this lead. Uh, I'm going to tin up both of these wires, uh, get this, soldered in and then I'm going to use some electrical tape to fix it in place and then I'm going to put some uh, ferrite cores 
around this wire, on this cable, I should say, as the common mode choke uh, before it goes back to the radio. So yeah, my finger's pretty close to the soldering iron tip, but that's how I'm gauging the temperature on the wire before I try to tin it up. I wanna make sure that it is not quite uncomfortably hot, but hot, you know, where, where the shielding is at. That way I know the actual wire is hot. If you have a better way, well, you know, the comment section is there. I'm always uh, willing to learn if it's uh, something useful. Cool. So both of those are tinned up. Let's... Uh So excuse the fish eye, but I figured I'd show you the the big, big, big fish I caught. <laughs> I'm reeling these, uh, this 550 line from having cast. I use a fishing pole with a 50 test pound or 50 pound test, whatever you call it, and a two ounce weight to cast over tree limbs. And let's switch to non-fish eye mode here and you'll see Hopefully the end of my 550 right there. Cool. So now we're gonna attach that to the antenna and hoist the antenna up and hopefully that's high enough that we can have enough elevation over the ground to get a decent test with a nano VNA. So you can see this is the end of the feed line cable and the end of the antenna right there. Let's see right there so I'm gonna hook up the nano VNA right here and see what we get so let's see if we can get this to show here or not it's not doing a great job of showing it but oh, there we go about 2.1.022 SWR and smack in the middle of where I cut it for 14 to 50 so not exactly perfect but it's good enough for what i need to do so next i'm going to get the radio out here with a battery and uh, see if i can make a contact on 20. let's see if we can get someone up on 255. there's a faint station on 250 but they're so faint that i can't talk to them You can't probably hear it on the video, but they're there. But they're so faint I can't talk to them, and I'm, I don't want to key up over them. I know they're there. So let's go to 260s and use. CQ testing, CQ testing, CQ testing, Kilo, Delta, Niner, Oscar, Lima, November, calling CQ on 14.270, testing my radio, CQ, CQ, CQ. All right, gang, couldn't get a, an SSB contact, but I didn't get video of it. I hopped on FT8 and I got an FT8 contact, uh, actually got three FT8 contacts in like 10 minutes. Using the antenna, I know the antenna's good. Uh, look forward to uh, seeing it in, in action, in real world action uh, sometime in the next uh, few months. I'm gonna be taking it up for parachute mobile work. Thanks for uh, coming along on the trip of building this thing and you can see it's pretty simple to build. Just takes a little bit of time and uh, a little bit of soldering. That's all it takes. So thanks for watching. See you next time.